background of what are we going to discuss and also introduce my esteemed panel members here. So sustainable, driving sustainable cooling solutions for future ready data centers. As data centers play a crucial role in our digital age, adopting sustainable cooling solutions is imperative. The interaction with our esteemed panel members will explore innovative approaches to address the environmental impact of data center cooling, ensuring efficiency and minimizing the carbon footprint for future ready data centers. The integration of AI and ML in data centers intensify the need for sustainable cooling solutions. These advanced technologies generate substantial heat necessitating efficient cooling mechanisms to maintain optimal performance. Sustainable cooling solutions not only mitigate environmental impact but also ensure the reliability and longevity of AI ML infrastructure, aligning technological progress with ecological responsibility. Global sustainability initiatives involve efforts to address climate change, promote clean energy, conserve biodiversity, and ensure social and economic equity. With this preface and background, I would now like to invite our esteemed panel members to discuss about the emerging trends and what they see in this domain to enlighten us as to what they're looking at and how are they dealing with these challenges. So I call upon stage our esteemed panel members, Sri and K. Jain. So give him a big round of applause as he comes over the stage. Sri and K. Jain holds a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering from Bits Pilani and master's degree from IIT Mumbai. He's a life member of Indian Nuclear Society and fellow life member of Consulting Electrical Engineers Association of Maharashtra. And he's worked on mission critical projects earlier of even nuclear establishments. And he's now extending the same expertise to several top quality hyperscale data center projects. In the past, he has delivered multiple high density tier three, tier four data centers of capacities excess of 25 megawatts of power and 4,000 plus racks. He's widely traveled and well read. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and coming over here. Our second panelist, Sri Mallika Arjunaya BT, whom we call as Mallika. So Mallika brings over 25 years of experience in the IT infrastructure solutions industry. He is a self-made first generation entrepreneur and I have huge respect for him where he has been instrumental in driving the company's mission of energizing society with sustainable and reliable energy systems. Under his leadership, his company, the Gravity India Technologies Limited, is known for the commitment to providing cutting-edge technology, exceptional customer service and personalized solutions tailored to meet the unique needs of each client. They have a particular focus on the fields of robotics, data analysis and AI and mobility, seeing great potential in these technologies as they work with Vertiv to improve efficiency, accuracy and profitability for businesses across various sectors. And I also have a few of my own colleagues who will be there, who will bring the Vertiv perspective of things. So we have Pritam Shah, who is a director of Edge Thermal Product and Offering Management. And I invite Pritam to come over to the stage. Anandan. A lot of you know Anandan here. Anandan is behind whatever we sell, okay? So the sales guys go and sell, and they go and sell aggressively. And of course, when we sell solutions the first time, we do have problems, and we need to maintain it. So Anandan looks after the entire life cycle management of entire thermal products. So he's a director of air technical support operating services. We have Sarwar. Sarwar is our director of Colo Cloud and Thermal Solutions. Sarwar, Sarwar please come over the stage. And then we have Alok Rajput, who is the Head of Thermal Business, Senior Director of Thermal Management Solutions and Sales for Vertiv. And I'll be moderating this for the next 30 to 40 minutes, what we think we will, we will have this session. My first question is So you have been in the industry for more than four decades, worked with multiple customers. 
and you've seen various faces or stages in the, in the data center industry's life cycle. So what are your views on the global trends like AI and 5G and machine learning and the benefits and challenges it brings and also a little bit about the sustainable cooling design so that we can make future ready data centers. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon to all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Vartin for having me here. Yes, as Mr. Prasad said, I have been in the data center industry in India ever since the industry started. I was involved with the first data center design as early as 1995. So it's been a long journey. Uh, yes, data center industry has evolved in India in a big way now, especially after 2014 when this uh, new trend of latest generation of data center has started the so-called hyperscale data centers where the you know the capacity of each data center the first hyperscale that we had planned in 2014 was around 15 megawatt of IT power and today we are doing 40 megawatt of IT power and even some are doing 50 megawatt of IT power in a one single data center so yes data center industry has evolved in a very big way in India and um, as we all heard the motivational speaker, Mr. Prasad, that the way the industry is going to grow in the next 10 years uh, is going to be more than double of what it is today. And in, I would say it's going to be triple or four times than what it is today because the data and the digitalization in India is foremost. We can see our government, we can see everybody equally enthusiastic about uh, utilization of data and digital environment. So there is no saying that uh, you know data center industry will not grow or it is uh, it will go like uh, go bust like other earlier you know dot com bust or things like that. It is there to stay, and of course everybody needs to play their role, including the infrastructure uh, providers and you know equipment providers and some cooling solution providers like what they. Uh, coming to this specific uh, query as to what do I see the future trend with respect to AI? Uh, as we all know, AI is more compute. And more compute means more data handling. And more data handling means more data centers. So obviously, this is going to give a big push to the data center industry. But more specifically, it's going to result in more density of data, data handling, which means that more power per rack. Uh, present data centers handle on an average, all hyperscalers handle on an average around 10 to 12 kilowatt per rack. But now in this uh, year, this year onwards for the next 5-6 years, it's going to be a big jump from this 10 to 12 kilowatt to 15, 20, 30 and even 40 kilowatt per rack. And that is going to be a big challenge at the server cooling level. See, uh, as far as the head end is concerned, it's all going to be the same. The chillers are going to be there. The, the cooling towers are going to be there. There may not be a much change in that. But at the server level, so far we have been doing the cooling largely with air. So we have a series of heat exchangers starting from the chiller at the terrace and then uh, you know uh, coming to the data center where we have these uh, crack or pahus or whatever these units we have where we finally exchange the heat from the liquid to the air and then air is forced onto the servers and the servers get cooled by air. So when we have this AI coming in a big way and when the densities are rising from 10 to 12 kilowatt to 40 kilowatt or 50 kilowatt per rack, air cooling is no more sufficient. So it obviously calls for liquid cooling and other similar solutions like hybrid liquid cooling. So these solutions are going to be the major players in the next decade of data center cooling. And uh, you know, I am I'm pleased to learn that our team is already there in that field. They are already advanced. They have various uh, solutions in that area. But yes, that is going to be the core area of cooling. It could be either immersion cooling or it could be indirect. Uh, liquid cooling or direct liquid chip cooling but these are the solutions and 
many data centers in India also have already implemented these kind of pooling solutions. The beginning has already been made. I was associated with one of the data centers and only about a few months ago, a, a company, a hyperscaler, who works only with liquid cooling. In their all data centers in the world, they work only with liquid cooling, has already established a server hall in India and they are working mainly on liquid cooling. So, yes, that is the trend to take on. Uh, as regards the other question that you had about the sustainability, uh, the sustainability in data centers is mainly about the major part of the sustainability role played in, in data centers is the energy and the power that we consume. So, as everybody knows, data centers consume a lot of power. These data centers that we are talking consumes megawatts and megawatts of power. Um, 60 megawatt and 70 megawatt is the new trend, 50, 60, 70 megawatt in a single building of a footprint of 50,000 square feet. So, with this kind of uh, you know power being consumed, the main thing that sustainability issue comes up is in the energy and of course that again is a utility supply company issue, not more of data center because ultimately what the utility companies give power to the data center, that needs to be clean power, that needs to be the green power, which already India and the utility companies are making a big stride. Uh, today about 40% uh, of the power installations in India are solar and other green, uh, solar and wind and, th and hydro, uh, hydro, thermal power, uh, hydro power stations. So these account for around 42 to 45 percent of installations, installed capacity in India. And about 30 percent is the power consumption today. Even if we are consuming power in our home, 30 percent of our power is coming from clean power, uh, the green power. When it comes to cooling solutions, the major issue that comes to my mind is the refrigeration gases. And I believe that what team is already advancing in that and uh, they, you are already using the most latest uh, gases which are uh, uh, which are already you know approved in all the places. Recently I was uh, dealing with one of the data center design and uh, one of the Colo customer from uh, not Colo customer, one of the hyperscaler from abroad was insisting that the gas that we had proposed uh, based on the utilization or base of this data from what team or other competitors was not good enough for them and they said can we also use this one next generation gas and yes we had said yes and uh, at that time we had checked with the manufacturers and they said we can use that also but I would request and I would recommend here that we should take one step ahead in that direction and we should all go to that so that we don't have to ask them that okay we will also do that but we should be able to say we are also doing that. So that is one area where we need to go. As um, the rest of the things, I believe that with a state-of-the-art uh, factory like this, uh, what you must be using all green uh, ecos, you know, friendly products which go into their uh, equipment and those equipments when they go to the data center, they obviously account for the green data center or LEED certified data centers. Thank you, sir, for uh, giving a very, very detailed explanation. And I also want to tell the audience here that Vertu in 2023 has won the Data Center Sustainability Award. Okay, so we as an OE, it's a very, very prestigious award for an installation that we did in the United Kingdom. We got the Data Center Sustainability Award. I just got And uh, sir also talked about uh, uh, the power usage in data centers. So globally, the Department of Energy in the United States has said that approximately 200 terawatt hours. Okay, so that's big. Is, is what the total electricity usage by data centers is. And it's 2% of the world electricity usage is currently by the data centers. And approximately 80% of that is used by the hyperscalers. My next question is to Sarwar, who, who is in the market, who meets Colo customers, cloud customers on a daily basis, and hyperscale customers. So I want Sarwar to take on from what Mr. Jain said, and what are the trends that you see an OEM perspective when you go and talk to customers in the Colo Cloud and Hyperscale. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Prasadji. Thanks a lot. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, just to take the points uh, set by uh, Jansa forward, I would say 
Vertip uh, being a pioneer in uh, providing data center solutions, we are constantly keeping watch uh, over the changing trends in technology globally. And actually we have been market leader in providing uh, innovative, energy efficient cooling solutions from decades. In fact, uh, we are the trendsetters. Whenever, whichever new technology comes up, we are actually launching it much ahead than anybody else is doing in the market. So going forward, we see rapid growth in artificial intelligence and machine learning coupled with the IOTs of uh, actually uh, expected to a strong uh, demand in new Polo and Cloud data center segment. And with this, actually, uh, uh, we also see uh, like higher computing power and innovative chip designs actually leading to the increase in average rack densities. And average rack density as it is increasing, this is coupled with the more and more demand in the new data centers, actually putting lot of pressure on our grids. And this is actually resulting into the like higher uh, carbon footprint and sustainability challenge. So having an innovative solutions, having a, uh, an energy efficient solution is no more an op option for the designer, but it is a necessity now, right? So uh, apart from this, what we see like to address the very high density application requirement and to address the sustainability challenge, uh, market is definitely moving towards the liquid cooling. And, and we also, uh, this is also evident from the surge in inquiry base, uh, which we are experiencing now, where designers, planners are going into deep detailing of this liquid cooling. They are trying to understand more about the solution so that same can be implemented for their upcoming requirement. So I, uh, just to summarize, three things are going, uh, actually happening already. One is that uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning and IoT is going to push further the market demands for the Colo and cloud segment. Second one is like higher computing power and innovative chip design on the IT and hardware side actually pushing the rack densities which is going up and up. And the third one is that to address the very high density application requirement, definitely market is heading towards the liquid cooling. So this is our uh, like observation in today's scenario. Thank you, Sarva. So that was about the big customers, right? Colo, Cloud, Hyperscale. But around five years ago, when the Gartners of the world and the IDCs and the DCs of the world never talked about edge, Vertu actually talked about edge. And we have our own theory, what is known as the E equal to MC square, which means the edge is a multiplier of the cloud. So as much as cloud big data centers are going to happen because of the data latency issues, we need to have data closer to the customer. Every time the data can't go to the cloud and traverse and come back. So we started investing in edge solutions and the smart solutions. And we got a full range of edge products for the edge customers. And Pritham, who is on this panel here, is actually handling the edge customers, the edge data centers. Pritham, what is view, your view as you go around, travel around the world and Southeast Asia when it comes to the edge data center and what's the trend that you Thank you, Prasadji. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, as we see, I think we have seen a lot of growth uh, stories uh, around the Polo and Cloud. We have been seeing it in for the last three years and it probably will continue to grow. However, uh, for having a better user experience, uh, probably what we see is to have uh, edge data centers, which is going to play a major role in, in, in reducing the latency and uh, improving the user experience overall. So and that is uh, going to be another key where you know you have a real-time AI applications when we talk about it, it is a necessity to, to have uh, age data centers. So the growth uh, wave, what we have seen, the future growth wave is what we anticipate is going to be at age data centers. That's the first point uh, which we would like to see. And when we talk about uh, sustainability perspective, uh, definitely edge data centers uh, necessarily have to focus on three key areas. One, the, the overall infrastructure basically, that is the active infrastructure, 
the IT equipment is being used because it demands a uh, lot of computing power and when it demands for a lot of computing power definitely the, the hardware piece of it necessarily have to be uh, to be different. Maybe more of GPUs and EPUs are being used for, for these data centers to have more computing power. At the same time, uh, the, the, uh, the since it's going to be efficient, so, so the power requirement for these GPUs and GPUs also would be lesser. So, so that is one change which would be required from sustainability perspective. Second, it's a passive infrastructure where we play a role, major role. Uh, now from, uh, from when we talk about passive infrastructure, of course, power requirement is there, all that is fine. But then the cooling contributes major energy consumption, close to about say 38 to 40 percent in a, in a data center. Where um, uh, it's our responsibility to see that you know the, the cooling solutions being deployed uh, is more of energy efficient. So from Vertiv standpoint, we, we have various uh, cooling solutions like liquid cooling, I think uh, our colleague has spoken about it. That's a train going on. But apart from liquid cooling, there are indirect coolings like uh, say RDHX. We we talk about I mean which 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 can uh, cater to the high computing rack densities, say 40 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt kind of a thing. And at the same time, uh, it, it, it doesn't hold ourselves when we talk about age. We have a generation four in row cooling. So in row cooling, we have been hearing a lot from uh, from uh, from various. I mean, it's there that technologies exist since long. However, there are a lot of changes happened to the technology as well from energy efficiency perspective. It, it, it comes with the variable capacities now with inverter, digital scrolls and all that, new advanced technology generation 3, EC fans, all that stuff together to, to, to give us energy benefit to the client. So uh, along with this, uh, there are certain initiatives which Vertiv has taken on the alternate refrigerants. See, uh, uh, I mean, we all know that we necessarily have to be uh, very careful for our generations to come with, with respect to environmental aspect. So, uh, alternate refrigerant is something which we are working on very closely with all the stakeholders within the industry. So, here uh, we have developed uh, some of the products with alternate refrigerants like having a lesser GWP, like R1234ZE for chillers and uh, R32 for some smaller systems, so like that. Of course, I mean one more important point which I would like to mention in India, we have first of its kind lab which is going to come in IIT Madras, which basically I think uh, are going to, uh, to have the uh, GWP along with that the, the uh, inflammability also will be checked, and the intersection between these two have to be checked. So uh, the, the refrigerant which is having a lower GWP will have a infl higher inflammability. So cross section necessarily have to be evaluated and a first of its kind is uh, lab is going to be there in India and it's Vertiv lab set up by Vertiv for in IIT Mumbai. So we are going to have inauguration maybe sometime in January, uh, January end or so. So these kind of initiatives we are also associated with various organizations as, as, an, as mentioned from each perspective various computing uh, organizations or even uh, server manufacturers or uh, chip manufacturers, we are closely associated with all of them to see that you know we provide uh, uh, sustainable and energy efficient solutions which are environmental friendly. So that's my take on uh, H, H data center sir. Thanks Preetam. It is important to tell about the IIT Madras thing. IIT Madras will have the first of its type lab in the country. We don't have a country, we don't have a lab in the country. It will test refrigerant mixtures for global warming potential and inflammability and the, in, and the intersection of that and that will be a completely Vertiv sponsored lab in IIT Madras and it will be, it will be named after Vertiv and that will be sometime in the month of end of January we will have the inauguration of that. My next question is to Alok. Alok heads the business so whether it is Edge or whether it is Cloud and Colo and Hyperscale, Alok looks after the entire product portfolio from a sales and solutions point of view. So Alok, you heard about Mr. Jain, Preetam, Sarvar. So what are your views on what's happening in the market? And what are the things that Vertiv is doing to address this inflection point in the growth in the industry? Um, I think uh, in a brief I would say Mr. Jain uh, covered it very well. He was very uh, articulate to cover most of the things, how the trends moved from initial data centers to what we are doing right now, whether it is on uh, chillers or PCW operating on high water temperatures or large capacity DX units or how do we increase, decrease the PUE and increase the data center efficiency. But I think that is something which is, if we said today, it is happening today but almost 
most of the things have been done. So next, uh, the trends, you also uh, talked about uh, loads of racks, maybe 20 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt, even 50, 70, 80 kilowatt. Yes, that's the future is expected and we should be ready to, uh, you know, to sort of, that would, we should be ready to handle that sort of load. So for that, everybody is talking about liquid cooling. That is one thing. And uh, I'm proud to say that whatever, we have already executed a couple of projects as I said in my uh, slides. So we have done liquid cooling, there are two types of liquid cooling. One is direct to chip liquid cooling, we call it DCLC and the another one is immersion cooling, we call it uh, VIC, vertical immersion cooling, wherein the servers are uh, tipped into the ra uh, uh, liquid in the tank and it is cooled. It is energy efficient solution, uh, much, much better than air. Uh, we know advantages and disadvantages of air and liquid. Liquid is much uh, better way to handle more uh, high heat density. But what is next? So DCLC we have done, VIC we have done. Now what is next? Whatev is doing. Yes, Whatev is doing a lot of things. So Whatev, there is a collaboration between Whatev and NVIDIA, wherein Whatev and NVIDIA teams are working together. They have to work together for next three years to uh, work upon new future technologies, which should not be innovative enough, but also to be efficient. Now, the US government, there is a program called Cooler Chips, which was uh, late for the companies persuading these innovative cooling solutions for future. This is, anyway, this is cooler chip program. This is not for today, this is for future. So they are envisaging a data center wherein, as Mr. Jen said, that in that particular square fit, the sustainability question would be the power. So yes, they are also talking power, that power in future, the chips which people are anticipating, they should be able to handle 25, 30 times of power of existing server racks. So imagine, and what sort of cooling, liquid cooling is required. So if we look at that future part, actually we are not ready with the current, whether air solutions or whatever liquid solutions we have. So these two teams from NVIDIA and Vortev and other companies also, they're working together, they're working on both the technologies for future, the purpose of this entire cooler chip program is to reduce energy efficiency and that relates to sustainability also. It, it has to ensure that the data center should run high temperatures of around 40, 42 degree centigrade. It should reduce uh, energy by 5 to 7 percent which is huge when we talk about 80 kil megawatt or so in a building. And at the same time when we talk about energy efficiency it should improve by 15 to 20 percent. So these are measures which on which there is a collaboration and Vertev has already taken a step, we are uh, going ahead and Mr. Prasad also mentioned kind of growth is happening in US and all those things. So Vertev has always been pioneer, has always been ahead in the market to take all these steps and I think with this initiative we will be able to take care of this sort of loads. There is a uh, US government has given a grant also, I think 40-45 million dollar for this program. So we can see the seriousness about it. Yeah. Thank you, Alok, for specifically talking about the Cooler Chips program. It's very, very prestigious for Vertu. Vertu works with Boyd, Honeywell, NVIDIA and three other universities actually to take the $5 million grant to come up with the next phase of liquid cooling because that's what the Department of Energy in the United States is concerned about. The 2% of power currently being used by data centers, how will the future look like? So thank you very much, Alok, for touching on that touching on that and then I, I now want to go to Mr. Malik. So as I said before, we have a partner ecosystem and we have exclusive thermal partners, some of whom are here and we also have Mr. Malik who's also started off as a power partner selling power solutions of Vertil, small power and then to medium and large power and now also into cooling and IT management solutions of Vertil. So Mr. Malik, we would like to hear from you from a reach relationship and resource point of view, how are you beefing up to address the large opportunity that we are seeing in front of us right now? Happy afternoon. Prasadji is asking something which uh, the reach, whatever that is asking, there is not a standard rate of birth, there is not, no books. It differs from individuals. A lot of successful business people are here. They must be definitely doing some of the other things to reach the customer. 
but definitely what my always uh, belief system is if we don't sit to the new with new customer every day we will not be able to grow so we need to tailor made some kind of a pro, uh, action plans where day in and day out we can reach out to the new customers okay is the gravity i just tell you what we do the two things we do that is uh, i connect that is industry connect existing industries in areas how to get connected with that particular customer so there is a one program second program is a new upcoming market how do we address that and how do we understand and how do we connect these two things which we run the first one uh, in the existing uh, setup reach so what we do is we take four to five uh, people from sales four to five from the service and another four to five from the back end operations we make as a team and send them to a particular industrial area so we do the door to door i mean we do lot of uh, homework there will be existing customer we take appointment there is a phone call we fix some appointment with the new customers and also we go to door to store so this we are doing from last two years continuously on every thursday so that gives the connection to the new areas where we go and meet the customer we explain about the total gamut of products so you never know customer definitely wants any of other services so he will become a our customer that is one thing we keep on driving from last two three years we we are seen a really success there second thing is we do the tech day uh, tech day means you know a lot of consultants are there a lot of architects are there a lot of contractors are there a lot of influencers who really help us in taking to a customers so we do the tech day that is in any of the friday the second of the off day we go to the their offices and sit with them for half a day explain about entire our products and services and we offer them as snacks in the evening for their team and we spend good amount of time there and we talk about our services and that is how we engage with all this uh, influencers in the market that is we been doing from last one year a part of customer meets and uh, we also go to the any industry area if you go you will be definitely finding some of the association if you go to the in bangalore go to the electronic city there is an association of electronic city industrial association you go to dabas pet there is an association if you go there will be association in every industrial areas so we go there and we talk to that association we take because normally they meet once in a quarter so we take two hours or three hours of time and we project our our products and services to the entire community where they come so like this we keep on reaching the new, new uh, existing clients that is what uh, we see so like this two three programs we do it then second is uh, new trends for example if you talk about today uh, automotive uh, industry is coming to a really big change by 2030 uh, carbon uh, level of uh, indian government to reach they have to do a lot of other things so this year is going to be a huge investment in any automotive and automotive ancillary industries they have to set up a data center in each and every plant from last 6 months we already took three orders and this year with just three customers we already seen 15 to 20 crores of opportunity in just three companies so imagine the business in automotive field the way it is going because of the carbon footprint emission they need lot of data which they have to set up they have to collect the this thing lot of digitalization happening there so that is the big market which is emerging now so we all should work there that is what uh, we are doing right now second thing is i think you must be seeing uh, every industry has been connected by a corridor now like for example bangalore to chennai the industrial corridor is just two hours uh, journey now earlier it was five hours so each and every industry uh, industries are getting connected by the corridors because of that the lot of warehousing and transportation hubs are coming going to set up in every outskirts of the city because the reach is going to be very high instead of having the big setup in bangalore and agulaz in chennai they are going to have one in middle of the chennai and bangalore it is only one hour journey the huge uh, parks are coming huge uh, warehouses retail outlets are coming up there is a huge opportunity in that area which we are able to see now so like this then then semiconductor uh, manufacturing is going to be a big in india 
I am talking about this way, this may be bigger than polo business or whatever it is. So, we need to really focus, we and early bird, semiconductor investment in India is going to be a big, that is a big opportunity for all of us. So, like this, if you start really seeing the market, what is the emerging market, where we can really go and which our solution, that is what we want. These are the two things about the reach. The, apart of this, we do a lot of other things, which is the main which I wanted to share with you. Then uh, you said the second one is relationship. That is a very, very important. If you don't have a good relation of engage with our existing customer, we lose out. It is not about the uh, account. It is account, the, one is an account, second is a person. Today, uh, people are moving, you know, once in three years they keep changing their jobs, once in five years they keep changing their jobs. How do you have engagement with a customer as a person as well as an account? So this is very, very important. So what we do is, uh, every hundred customers in a month, all the top people, who the managerial people, around five, six managers are there, they have to compulsory meet at least 25 customers in a month. So we make it a point that manager has to own 25 customers, he has to go there, sit with them, have a cup of coffee, discuss what is it. There is a questionnaire has been made so that he has to ask the 10 questions with customer and he spent 45 minutes to one hour of time and he has to come back. So this is the retention what we are doing right now. Then secondly, we do a lot of, uh, all of a sudden once in a month we do free uh, AC checkup, free power quality checkup, free battery impedance check. It is something now we keep on throwing to the customer of these 100 freebies what we throw in every month. So relationship is very, very important. We need to keep the relationship intact. If you don't meet the customer at regular intervals, it is very difficult. So customer meets anyway we do. So we started, uh, we call only 20, 25 customers in a small hotel and we spend at least one or two hours. So once in a month we started doing that. So like this relationship building is what we are doing right now. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Malik. And what I like about what he said was that it is not just about exploiting current opportunities. He's on the constant move to figure out what are the big trends. Semiconductor manufacturing in, in, in India will be the next big trend and it will be as big as the data center industry for power and power. So, so that's what he's now talked about. So I'm sure we will keep watching. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'll have to cut short because I've got some indication that we need to close at four. So this is my last question and to the most important person here because we tell these big stories, solutions to customers because there is somebody who will have to ensure that this is installed, commissioned and all the solutions work through the entire life cycle till we decommission our solutions at customer side and that's Anandit. So I want to hear from Anandit the challenges that... We'll close it for you. So, uh, uh, so Anand, can you tell us about the challenges that you're facing and uh, your learnings and the mitigation plan and the new things that you're doing in the service part of the virtual business? Thank you, Prasadji. Good evening, one and all. Uh, myself, Anand, I take care of uh, service operation uh, to support uh, our customers as well as their partners. We have uh, um, service department uh, having a lot of programs. People here may be knowing that the TV is uh, uh, manufacturing and delivering uh, <coughs> innovative products, but we have we are also having a I mean, very strong service network and service department. So here uh, I would like to explain that we have around 150, under 150 uh, uh, on roll uh, uh, engineers. I mean, uh, the uh, Tamil team as well as 1,500. Uh, partners uh, service team who is uh, day and out they are doing the installation and commissioning and uh, uh, after uh, warranty, warranty support as well as the service support in the field and we also drive a lot of programs um, periodic uh, trainings to the service engineers and in order to support the colo kind of big products uh, chiller pkdx and fan wall so we have our uh, innovative tools and tackles and uh, um, product like uh, scissor lift and mini uh, cranes and other things for the, uh, taking care of the uh, installation and commissioning as well as the service support in the field. And uh, with respect to the DX system,
system and uh, sustainability what we say. Uh, we are also having, uh, we advise our team in case of uh, advanced leak detection system like electronic leak detector, other things. So in case of any uh, system found like a uh, <coughs> shortage of gas, we don't allow the system, I mean gas to completely from the system. Early detection method we follow and we recover the refrigerant or we store the refrigerant in the reservoir tank and we try to uh, solve the problem and recommission the system so that the refrigerant gas will not be released to the atmosphere. So we, we drive this and we insist a lot of uh, other uh, innovative programs we are driving to support our customers. Thank you Anandan. So Anandan and his team stays awake all day and night to ensure that our customers get sleep well. So my teleprompter here tells me that I've got five more minutes. So we'll have just two more questions. One is to Mr. Jain and one is to Mr. Malik. So my next question to Mr. Jain, the last question to Mr. Jain before I go to Mr. Malik, is there's a lot of talk about sustainability. 75% of data center managers want to do sustainability, but only 23-24% as per a recent survey by Gartner even know what are the metrics to be measured in sustainability. So is that a challenge in, in this country when you work with multiple customers and what are the metrics on which you can measure the effectiveness of sustainability goals? Yeah, hello. Basically, sustainability goal in a data center, as I explained earlier, uh, majorly relates to power consumption in the data center, which is one of the major concern. And then there are other concerns like, uh, you know, PUE, which is the uh, effective usage of power, and WE, effective usage of water, and other, uh, you know, environmental issues, what materials you have used or what kind of items you have used while building your data center. So this is the, you know, on an overall basis, these are the issues which come up in a data center with respect to sustainability. Now, when we design a cooling system, with the lower and lower mechanical PUE, there itself we are contributing to the sustainability. Because a, a cooling system with a mechanical PUE of 1.4 versus a new cooling system with the, which, is, which are now going lower than 1.2, the mechanical you know, PUE, there itself you have inbuilt into the design a lot of sustainability aspects where the power utilization will automatically be less. Added to that, these uh, facility managers and most of the operators of the data centers, they are very much wanting to achieve the you know sustainability and uh, lesser of carbon emissions. So again, they resort to lower power consumptions by way of operating in a better way. Uh, uh, you know, the, they they try to strengthen their aisle arrangements, the containment arrangements. You would be surprised that in most of the data centers which were built about three years and before back were not paying attention to containment and because of that their PUEs were as large as 2 to 2.5. By simply creating a very effective containment system, they can bring down those PUEs from 2.5 to straight away down to as much as 1.7 and 1.8. So those, this is one of the major role that an operator can play in achieving a better power usage uh, efficiency and another thing is water usage efficiency where the water is being used uh, in a you know very very uh, rough way without bothering about how much water can we really uh, contain or how much we can operate in fact, now no more data centers are being designed on water cooled systems. So, from that point of view, the water has been completely kept out because of not only the uh, shortage of water everywhere in every city, but also because of the problems associated with handling large volumes of water and treatment of the water. So, water is one aspect where if already you have an existing plant, one can pay attention to that. And then there are other aspects as to you know, whether you can um, you know, you know, update, upgrade your systems to utilizing better refrigerant gases or uh, you know, other aspects like that. So in my opinion, these are the main criteria where one can pay attention to achieve more sustainability. Thank you, Mr. Jain, for uh, telling us about sustainability goals and how it's being measured. And last question, Mr. Malik, we have two minutes to answer that question. The question is about 
20 years with Verte. So I just thought it's important to touch upon that. 20 years with Verte in, in, in our earlier incarnation as Emerson they took power. So I want to know what is it that you do with Verte? What does Verte do with you from an engaged, empowered and enabled perspective as a partner and how this relationship has blossomed for 20 long years? This is precisely 27th year. 1896 uh, we started. Believe me, we are, I have seen a lot of companies. The engagement with Vertif is uh, uh, right from the top person to anybody we can engage. They are engaging in our activities every day. And uh, weekly reviews, um, monthly reviews, and quarterly reviews, the senior management is coming and really pitching in. The engagement in any level is so beautiful. Uh, so we never seen any kind of uh, problems in that kind of engagement. When it comes to the business, uh, about the product, the knowledge, the solutions, they are always engaged with us to give to the customers. See, as a partner, we all know we cannot hire that kind of technical manpower to give us a little to the customer. So, always Vertiv is hand in hand to us to give that kind of solutions. That is an engagement what we have with Vertiv from last 27 years. So, uh, be it uh, deliveries, any problem with customers, they will handhold us with the customer. They will uh, give the solutions. So, they stand with us in every stage. Like 24 by 7, we can reach out to any level of uh, management. I think how many times I called 11, 11, 30, 12 o'clock to vice presidents. So, a lot of people know. So, whenever we call, they are always stand with us. I never seen in 27 years, somebody is not picking my call, somebody is not answering our this thing, somebody is not coming to the customer problem and really stand with us. Even though we have failed, our engagement is pretty good and thanks to the Vertu team. So, engagement is good. Then, uh, Empowerment, that's a very good. I mean, see, anybody to empower what we need, we need a knowledge. So, they keep on training us in every product line, like technical, non-technical, sales and everything. There is a periodical training are happening. Then, uh, tools, lot of good tools have been given. The PRM is there, the technical knowledge, technical data sheets. Everything is open, so they are enabling us to the, go to the customer and talk about the product so confidently. We know the manufacturing facility, we know the in and out of the company. So they are enabling us completely, empowering us, so that we can go and pitch our product and solutions without having any one person doubt. If I don't have a confidence in me about the company or a product, I will not be able to sell in the market. Today. Whether we are right or wrong, but we are going in front of customers so confidently because Vertiv is there to take care of any kind of maturity. So that way, empowering, you talk about EDMs, you talk about Markham activities, you call, you, there are so many things Vertiv is enabling us or empowering us to go to the market and that is really phenomenal. Thanks to the Vertiv team for all this support. Thank you, Mr. Malik. So it's about enabling, empowering, and it's not about just, it's also about energizing. So together, 27 years of long relations with, with, with Vertu. And what I heard about from him was that we co-create solutions for our customer. So together with the partner and Vertu, we give a solution to the customer, explain it to them, and then we go through with the entire life cycle. Thank you, Mr. Malik. And that was the last question on the panel. Thank you for all the panel, thank you to all the panelists for, uh, for taking the questions and answering patiently. And thanks to all the audience here for listening very, very patiently. Thank you very, very much. Thank I, just you, want, thank you. I just request all our panel members to just stand here for a group photograph.